almost any of our typical embankment shorelines that you see to go to the waterfront along San Francisco, uh, so certain places where there aren't any piers. Uh, Treasure Island, you go to Alameda, you go to Berkeley, you know, this is what you see. You know, the entire frontage road along a uh, 80. This is what you see is an embankment, which is about 12 feet to 14 feet, uh, or it needs to be. If it's lower, you, you see the flooding happening in the bank. Six feet, normal tide range. Nine feet is what happens once every five, six, ten years or so. That's your, that's your extreme water level. And, you, um, and then you have waves on top of it, and the elevation works, you know, 12 feet or so. You throw in three feet of sea level rise, you know, that's three feet of overtopping that would have, that would have to be accounted for some way or the other. And so we start looking at design life, risk, and consequences. Again, seismic tsunamis, seismic and tsunamis, two separate uh, uh, phenomena. There's a low probability of occurrence in the sense that we design them for 500 years, or 400 years, or 1,000 years or so. But the consequences are significant, and therefore we designed for 600 and 400, 500 years. Sea level rise is, it's almost a certainty. It is gonna happen, how much we don't know, but there's a low immediate risk. And so therefore, adaptive management and linking it to a monitoring strategy. So with this sort of science, you know, we then went to the developers and their equity partners and said, well, this is what the science is saying. You know, where do you want to be on this curve? You know, they said, well, you know, what is the most conservative number, you know, in terms of financing two CFD bonds, community district bonds, you know, 60 years is what it is. So in 60 years, we have sort of paid for that development. And so if we can go to 60 to 70 years out, what would the sea level rise be? And since we really didn't want to challenge or pick a number, we picked the highest number and said, you know what, this number right here, this happens to be three feet over about 70 years, was what we picked. And that was about four years ago. Uh, I think it has received you know, quite a bit of uh, um, acceptance from a lot of the agencies. They have started looking to look at this you know, number and approach, planning horizon, looking at the risk, where do you have to be? If the development is uh, you know, wood frame structure, you could probably go to a lower one. If it's a hospital, if it's a wastewater treatment plant or a marina or a terminal, you probably want to go to the highest ones. So the solutions are good levees and embankments, flood boats, um, we talked about that, to move higher. Seattle wasn't built that high. They abandoned their first floor and moved up. The streets were all elevated by about 10 feet. Uh, New Park Port, Park portions of Chicago have done the same thing. Um, retreat or do something else, there's barriers, locks. So for Treasure Island, you know, what we did was we designed the perimeter of Treasure Island to, at the time of construction, accommodate at least 30 years of sea level rise. So that the first 30 years, we don't have to use any of the funds that, from the financing that are being used to build their treatment plants, their roadways, their schools, and everything else. So how would you do that? So we built it up to about 16 inches higher than what we need to be at today. Um, for the future, we looked at, you know, what would these adaptations consist of? You know, well, it didn't really seem like a, uh, like a leap to say that, you know, well, we could probably add on, you know, 16 more inches, which is only a foot and a half, to an embankment and we buy another 20 years. Um, there were concerns about, you know, visibility and, and things like that, and so we said, well, you know, you could probably even go up higher amounts of fill and elevate your pathways and trails up there. You could, uh, where you have the space, you could do, you know, the same thing that I showed there. You would set it back and have these areas which are inundated once a year or twice a year and then and, and you accommodate it within your uh, planning itself. Um, open spaces, for example, if they're flooded twice a year, yeah, uh, it's possible. You could um, uh, include additional features, marshes, wetlands, you know, those kind of things. You put all of these into the plan itself and presented them to um, the city and the regulatory agencies. <coughs> the other thing we talked about was retreat where he said this would be our initial shoreline construction. 
what we have seen as coastal engineers over time is that beaches, and Roger showed sand and gravels, and they were taking three foot waves, three and a half foot waves, versus if you were to go at this slope, you need one ton rock for three foot waves. You know, and so how does that work? You know, it's these slopes and the dissipation of energy along the slopes that you can really use to uh, take the wave run-up component of it away. And so what we looked at was you could retreat these shorelines, put them back, have public beaches if they're really exposed, have marshes if that is sustainable right there. And so, we had, so what they were built up for, these elevations, for wave run-up and tides. Now we take the wave run-up part of it, get rid of it, <coughs> and substitute sea level rise for that, and you have that same allowance. Hunter's Point, we've done you know, pretty much the same thing. We put some uh, uh, mats to trip the waves. That's another thing that could be done, is that you could put uh, wave trip devices out in front of the shorelines to, again, not have waves come out. Elevate walkways and pathways and stuff to actually bring it out <coughs> that protect the, uh, uh, the walkways. Mm -hmm. The boardwalk have those come out onto the water itself. Um, these are sensitive species that, uh, sensitive grasses that um, were native in the area, and so we just sort of uh, enhanced those. Looking at Peter, again, the Peter Bay. Um, 